Hi everyone, this video walks through completing Packet Tracer Assignment 2.5.3, Propagating a Default Route in OSPF Version 2. This Packet Tracer Assignment is part of the CCNA Version 7 Enterprise Networking Security and Automation Cisco Networking Academy curriculum. Now, in this particular lab, we've got OSPF set up and we've seen how to set up OSPF in our last few labs. In this module, we've also seen how to tweak OSPF as far as the hello and dead uh, interval timers. Um, we've seen how to set different priorities for the designated router and backup designated router uh, election process and kind of force our hand in that um, election. And we also set the bandwidth just to see the advertised bandwidth again doesn't actually change the bandwidth the uh, link operates at but it changes the advertised bandwidth so OSPF changed the advertised route or what it calculated was the best route um, because of the shortest path first or the Dijkstra algorithm it uses to calculate that remember OSPF looks at if there's more than one way to get from the source to the destination it's going to use the one that has the lowest cost which again OSPF that's why it has that total map of the entire network topology of everybody that's participating in OSPF so it can make those decisions. All right. So again, it wants you to test to make sure you have connectivity from the PC to the web server. So you can just ping um, from here, desktop command prompt, and we're going to ping 64.100.1.2. And it says reply, but destination host unreachable. So something is going on that we can't really reach it. All right. So that could be a lot of reasons. And you see here, it says, what message did you receive and what device issued the message? That was PC1. Let's see about PC2. Ping 64.100.1.2. You see, it still says destination host unreachable. And if I try from PC3, ping 64.100.1.2 it says the same thing all right so because of that something's going on with the advertisements because it's been long enough all my lsa's have been circulated here and everybody knows about everybody but if i go to r2 here and look at a routing table so i do show or let me go to enable show ip route let's see who i know about Right. So do I know about that network on the other side of the Internet? 64.100.1.2. It doesn't look like I do in any of these routing table entries. So remember, it always tells you how it knows about somebody. It looks like I know about OSPF uh, links to all these places, the local and connected ones. Right. Are the ones that are plugged in. So I don't know about this network over here. So it could be it's not advertised, but what I can do is set a gateway of last resort is what it's called or a default route. So what that means is I'm going to set a default route on the router I want this to go out of. And there's a couple different ways, remember, that you can do that. We learned about that in a previous class uh, when we set static routing, right? But even though we're using dynamic routing, sometimes dynamic routing doesn't get the job done and we kind of want to back up. So that's why we call it the gateway of last resort when we're using it in combination with dynamic routing. So if I set a default route here, and then let's talk about it. So if I set a default route on R2, Okay, and I'm going to do config mode IP route all zeros, remember, for the subnet mask and the IP address, and then S010. So, what this does is it's telling R2 is saying, hey, if I don't know about it, so this means any IP address that I don't know about in this table right here. OK, so if it's coming in for 192.168.10.8, I know how to get there. But if it comes in for 10.10.10.10, I don't know how to get there. Or, for instance, 64.100.1.2. I don't know how to get there. So what I'm going to do is no matter what, if I don't know about it, I'm going to send it out of S010 every single time. Now, what that does is, is it says, hey, I don't know about it, but you know what? I'm connected to the Internet. The Internet may know who 64.100.1.2 is. So even though it still may not get there because we could be we don't control the Internet, we could be totally wrong and it not still get there. However, it's making an effort. That's why we call it the gateway of last resort. So because of that, that will actually work because the Internet hopefully knows how to get here. Now, 
how do I get R1 and R3 to also know, hey, if I don't know about something, R2's got a pretty good option to send it out to the internet here. So to do that, we want to go down and make sure it is advertised with our OSPF advertisements. To do that, the router that you enter the default route on, we're going to go to router OSPF1, which is what they already set it up under. This isn't something new you had set up. Oh, sorry. R2. And we're going to do router OSPF1 or whatever process ID you already had set up. And then we're going to do default information originate. What that does is it tells R2 include this default route with my advertisements that I'm going to send out. So now if I go to R1 and I look at its routing table with a show IP route, at the very bottom you'll notice it says route 0.0.0.04 slash 0. That's my default route. And you see it learned about it through OSPF. All right. So it's kind of a special one there. And you can look at the uh, things up here, right? It's a candidate for a default route. So again, it's an external OSPF. So it is noticing that it is sending it outside of the OSPF little network we've got going on. So that means that anytime R1 doesn't know about something, it's going to send it to R2. Anytime R3 doesn't know about something, and we can also verify its routing table as well. All right, we see that same thing at the bottom there. So anytime R3 doesn't know about something, it's sending it out of S001. All right, which I know we didn't put on R1, but R2, but remember that's where it sends it out of S001 so we can get up here. And then R2 is going to send it out of this one right here. And again, that's not it. That's the one down there. This one that it has connected to the internet is actually S010. I know sometimes they overlap and you're, you're looking at them, but again, S010 is the one that's going to send it out of to the internet. So now if we try that command again by pinging it, we should get a successful ping because it doesn't know about it and it's going to send it out and boom we get it right so again now we are getting successful pings because again it knows where to send anything it doesn't know about out to the internet now it's not going to make it work for something the internet doesn't know about and again it is a gateway of last resort but it is a way in this scenario to get it to work without advertising that route that we really don't have control of in the first place or know about in our routing table